Rebel's block data structure is a, a really great design. It's much easier to use than um, the, the data um, structures that, that you see in other programming languages. It's uh, basically just one design. You put anything that you want into square brackets and you can search it, sort it, manipulate it, um, save it to files, share it across networks, and uh, you can put any sort of data that you want in it, binary text data. Um, it's just a, it's a very simple and powerful way to, to work with data in programs. Um, but there are some cases when uh, you need something more than just uh, data stored in text files. That's specifically uh, particularly true when you're working with uh, uh, websites. And I just finished the CGI tutorial, so this is sort of a useful extension to working with CGI. Very often when you work with uh, websites, you'll have many people often thousands or millions of people coming to a website each day um, all accessing uh, data that's uh, uh, that's used by the, the website and uh, storing data in a text file in blocks um, doesn't really cut it for for a lot of reasons um, for example if you have uh, a thousand people all working with the same text file at the same time and they're downloading that text file and making changes um, uh, the each of the concurrent users uh, won't see what the other people are saving to that that text file at the moment and worse as each user saves that text file back to the website uh, they they may overwrite and erase changes that other users are, are uh, currently working on and vice versa so uh, use a database to overcome problems like that databases are made to work with very large amounts of data very quickly much more quickly than you could just working with uh, uh, text files being saved back and forth onto a, a hard drive and you can search and sort the information in that database very easily that's what uh, databases are made to do and there are a variety of commercial databases you see um, uh, MS SQL and Oracle and uh, Access and uh, there are a variety of them uh, MySQL is one of the common ones used on the web especially it's very fast uh, powerful enough for uh, even very large websites um, and it's actually free on most web servers with most hosting accounts you'll you know, get a MySQL database if you have a, a web server you've probably seen some reference to it uh, it's totally free um, you can download it and install it this is a little program uh, we're going to use to actually uh, run MySQL uh, if you have uh, your own web server you need to talk with your web host to find out where MySQL is and uh, what your username and password is. Uh, we're going to download this little application in the server. Um, actually got it on the, on the hard drive already. Uh, but you download that application and run it. And what that lets you do is uh, to run a web server, a powerful Apache web server. And uh, you download that application. Just so you see here, when you run it, it will uh, it will um, unpack this onto the hard drive in where it, whatever directory you choose and in our case we've got it on uh, the, the D drive in the uniform server directory um, unpack that and you can run it if you put this on a machine that's accessible online you can have people actually um, access this uh, uh, the pages served at this uh, uh, web server and uh, in our case we're going to run on a local machine so you access your local um, your local server by typing in localhost http colon forward slash localhost you could also type in your IP address on the network and that would do the same thing uh, this automatically brings up the uh, control panel which lets you uh, control everything about the server the Apache server, MySQL server, PHP um, it's got Perl installed, it's another programming language like Rebel. Um, and it has a tool called PHP My Admin, which will let you go to uh, uh, create um, databases. Uh, we're going to create one here um, called Test, just so you can see how this works. Um, and the way databases work is all the information is, is stored in tables, which are 
sort of two-dimensional columns and rows. Uh, I'll create a test near the base with, for example, three fields. That's uh, three different columns. I'll call it field number one, field two, and field three. And this can contain any type of data, but there are a variety of different types of data that can be included. I'll have this one contain 255 characters. They'll all contain 255 characters. Um, and save it. And now we've got a data. We can browse what's in that database by clicking on the browse. Uh, in this case, there's nothing in there. Um, and that's how you work with uh, your um, local local database. If you do have a server, you just have to ask your, your hosting environment, and you're going to need to know uh, how to access that database, and you're going to have to know a uh, username and password uh, for it. Um, in order to work with MySQL databases, uh, you need to download this module. Go to this link and download the MySQL module. It's currently at version 1.1.2. 1. 1. Um, save it to your hard drive. And... Um, and we're going to open it up, and we need to unpack it, actually. Um, this version is currently stored as a um, zip file, which we can, we can open up, and uh, you need to extract it somewhere. In this case, I've already extracted it to uh, this directory, mysql uh, one two, and the original version of this, and this is the old uh, version 1. Point, uh, I believe it was 1.07, was made uh, when this tutorial was written. And it came in what was called a RIP package, a lot like a zip package, a comp compressed format. And the way you uncompressed RIPs uh, were just to go into the uh, Rebel interpreter, use the do function, and it would unzip that, that package. Um, and you only need to unpack that once. You do need to have uh, access to that. I just put my a copy of Rebel right in that folder so that when I run, whenever I run the files in that directory, it's in the same directory. And this is a module just like other modules that you've seen. It's a bunch of Rebel code. Um, and we run, we get access. It's, this just creates access for us. Uh, loads some functions and gives us access to the MySQL protocol. And we, we do that by doing a, a do command. Um, do and it's we use the file percent symbol. Um, my SQL dash protocol dot R. And you'll see that it says MySQL protocol is loaded. And now we can do things with the MySQL database. Once we have the Uniserver downloaded, or once we have access to a MySQL on our um, on our website, and we have MySQL protocol, we can start doing things uh, with databases. You saw how we created a database. Um, that database just lets us save data. Uh, this is the format that we use to to open a connection to a MySQL database. In our case, and the way Uniform Server works, we are currently on a local host, um, and the default password, er, default username is root, and the default password is root. Um, and we open the database that we that we want opened uh, by using this format. We use open function, and then we open this protocol MySQL. We put the username and password with a colon in between. We put a at whatever, wherever that uh, at SQL database is, MySQL database is hosted, and um, then we put the name of the database. Um, in this case, we're going to put test, and it's now connected to that test database. And if we want, we can start putting information into that database or taking uh, information out.